Like we're up. <laughs> 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 and welcome to episode 57 of the Brood Sages, Stormbound players with a head for the game. I am Freeloader with me, as always, are Sabaiku and Thomas. Sabaiku, how is it going tonight? Fantastic. And Thomas, how are you doing? Pretty all right. <laughs> we are the Brood Sages, easily the second best Stormbound related podcast in production. And as a reminder, you can always follow us at Brood Sages on Twitter. Or for all of you who think Bob Vila is the OG craftsman, our email address is thebroodsages at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> sorry for that weird introduction, everyone. Uh, I will say that we should probably record these somehow live so that people can kind of hear how we step into things. Because um, the, the planning part of it at the beginning is oftentimes <laughs> quite funny. <laughs> And oftentimes involves no planning whatsoever. No planning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that we call it planning is in and of itself an insult to planning. But uh, we'll, we'll move on from that. Uh, we do have some community news. Toad Games is sadly on hiatus. Um, there was over six months of competition, though. So hats off. That was a phenomenal run. Uh, and we are hoping for a speedy return to it. Although I will admit that I have not been playing um, for a while. I, it's it's really on me. I, I should have been playing every week and hyping it up, and I didn't. And I apologize to the community that uh, I wasn't doing more. Um, and Ice Coma directly. Like I, I, I don't know. I feel guilty about this one. I really loved Toad Games. I just, because of the home renovations going on and all the rest of the stuff in my life right now, it's not been a good time for me to to be you know taking on additional commitments. But I, I really would have liked to have been playing every week and hyping it every week. Um, well, Ice week. was saying on the Discord that he didn't have enough time to run it either. Uh, got a new job and congratulations. Congratulations and for good that. Good luck yep. to that. Um, so uh, participation was still good and pe- it, people were still very active. Uh, you know, a lot of people really enjoy doing it from week to week and trying to farm those extra coins. So, you know, hopefully things settle down and it gets picked back up again. I mean, I want to point out that even Thomas now understands the rules and how it's done. <laughs> so Which like, is impressive. <laughs> right? Like, uh, if Thomas can understand it, anyone can understand it. <laughs> I do have to be the bad guy on this. Unfortunately, like, unfortunately, any community made uh, version is like until it eventually becomes like an official version of Starbound, it will eventually die. That's just the way it is. Um, no okay. single person that is doing th- something for free can continue doing that permanently. No, you're right. You're right. Yep. Um, uh, but but that doesn't mean that the 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 program itself couldn't have kept going with another volunteer like i could have handed it off but um participation had, had kind of waned a little bit so we decided maybe the best thing to do is to just give it a couple of weeks and see what happens and see if there's uh interest in coming back i'm sure that like reckless right now is going how do i get my two other accounts <laughs> further along without toad games to prey on everyone um so uh but but no i hope it comes back i really do um and yeah, I, I will I will give credit where credit is due here, right? Like, so Sheepyard um, could have just been hands off and said, community does what the community does. We don't know anything, right? But instead, they're just like, oh, you want to throw a thing? Here, we will uh, put a system in place so we can give gold, rubies, whatever kinds of rewards we think are appropriate. Let's just go. Let's just dump resources into whatever community event you want to do. And in the case of Reckless's draft mode, they, were, they literally said, oh, well, we'll just take that and fold it into the game. Thank you very much. So um, they have been a bit more uh, proactive uh, than I would have expected, um, having having come from you know a different game where Blizzard Entertainment, it turns out, is a very large corporation. And, um, you know, you can do what you want with their games locally, but they don't really, you know. You, you can't really every every once in a while you can be big enough and you can be like hey can we get some swag for the rewards for this tournament and they'll say sure but for the most part they were kind of hands off so um let's move from community news and uh hopefully toad games comes back soon but we do have a rather big topic uh to talk about this is yet again as you can tell by the time of the month uh this is our patch notes episode so we have b- balance changes coming up uh, we will start with Sabaiku. Sabaiku, um, most powerful card in game is getting nerfed. What's going on? I'm, I'm so upset that you made me handle this one. I don't want to say it out loud. Because you have to. That's why it that's makes the... me 
angry and sad at the same time. But Reign of Frogs will now cost three mana instead of two. And That's the only nerf, though, right? Be yeah. still my heart. Okay, I'm still playing it. Thomas, you still playing it? Reign of Frogs? Yeah. Um, probably going back to like every other good deck that I hated to see Reign of Frogs uh, being played uh, from my opponent. So mm -hmm. I'll be a uh, hard swarm again. Yeah, okay. I'll still play Reign of Frogs. So, Becca, are you still going to play it? Yes. Well, mm -hmm. look, here's the thing. Reign of Frogs is the card that enables so much of other Shadowfen activities, whether yes. it's interactions with Obsidian Butchers or Bragda or Klaxi or even just having something cheap on the board for Toxic Sacrifice. Um, mm -hmm. It's it, it works so well with all the other cards in the faction that even though it costs three mana, you're going to play it. But two to three mana is huge. It's really so much more difficult to fit in now. It It is now no longer an auto-include in Shadowfen. I think this is now just a card that goes in slower decks that are trying specifically to work a Bragda or Klaxi combo. Mm -mm. And no, that's it. No, no, no. I'm going to be the contrarian here. I'll say yeah. this. Brujosa has said several times that when they nerf something, the play rate drops way lower than they think it should. And here's one of them. This is a trap, people. All right. Admiral Akbar is yelling at you right now. It's a trap. Reign of Frogs is still totally playable at three mana. And I know this. You know how I know this? Because, because it used to be three mana. <laughs> it used to be three <laughs> mana. And I played it at three mana. Okay. Now, for those, but, go ahead, Thomas, give us a history lesson before mm -hmm. you. Oh, I, I'm not even talking about that. So are you going to play Reign of Thro Frogs at three mana yes. or Azure Hatchers at four mana? You get no. two movement off of Hatcher. There, there are there are toad spam decks that I will run both because I have run both and I will continue to run both. But in the decks that just ran rain, he, I, I took a look at all of my Shadowfen builds that I've put together over the last I don't know a couple of months, and I can tell you one of the weird things about Shadowfen is aside from Helio Troopers and sometimes if you're playing a controlling deck Crimson Sentry, you lack a lot of three drops. The, the, Shadowfen loves four drops. It loves witches. It even likes Toad. It's maybe not as strong as it used to be, but it still really likes Toad. Um, two drops, dubious hags, sparkling kitties, gifted recruits. Like you've got two drops aplenty. If you're a controlling deck, you even throw in Toxac into that. Uh, most of my Shadowfen decks have green prototypes, way too many two drops, Helio Troopers as the only three. And then we move up from there. And those decks tend to be imbalanced when it comes to odd versus even mana turns, but it doesn't matter because it turns out Dubious Hags and Reign of Frogs and Toxac so powerful at two drop that I can afford to float a mana when I play them on turn four or five or seven or whenever. So in this case, I look at it and I just think I was going to float that mana like 80% of the time anyway. Now instead, I'm not floating it. Yeah, but... So to Spiku's point, uh, against your point, you play a lot more controlling type decks, a lot slower type decks. The amount of decks that are super aggressive that uh, are the second person to play and open with Wild Saber Paws and then Reign of Frogs sure. to just pretty much guarantee their win, it, obviously impossible now, and essentially eliminates the first or second turn uh, Reign of Frogs play. Right, because now and with four huge. mana, you play green prototypes into Reign of Frogs. You clog your own front line. You can't actually don't do it. Advance don't do it. your no. front. Don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. So, so, but I will say this: aside from Saber Paws, playing gifted recruits or dubious hags into Reign uh, going second felt bad. You clogged your front line, guaranteed. It and was unless still you good enough, though, good enough, yes, but not good. No, most of the time, most of the time that I'm playing against a Bragda opponent, they are playing Rain on Five, setting up the Bragda turn next turn. Most of the time that I am a, a facing a Bragda opponent, they play Rain on Five, and the fact of the matter is, because they've already played green prototypes on three, or because it's not in hand, they're playing a two drop and Rain of Frogs on five. It's fine. It's still a two drop and Rain of Frogs on five. When I play Claxi decks. I play Rain on 7 a lot. Guess what? I don't have a lot of 5 drops in my deck. 
So I'm playing either Witches and Rain and floating a mana, or I'm playing two two drops and Rain and floating a mana. It's not as it's a nerf. Yes, it is absolutely a nerf. It costs fifty percent more. And to Thomas's point, when I want to have a super aggressive opener of exactly Saber Paws into Rain. I don't get it anymore, and that sucks. Sure, and when you com- want to combo rain with butcher, so you can't do it as early anymore. You have to I do know. it later, and that's not good. If it's not good, if you're playing an aggressive Shadowfin deck, that extra turn makes a big difference. It doesn't. It doesn't. Look, I, I, I can point you to a lot of decks that ran unstable build into Hearth Guards that costs eight mana. But take a look at Fort of Ebonrock right. and Hearth Guards does not exist. Does not exist. It's true. Right. Um, and look at Hearth Guards when working with a structure does 14 damage and Butchers and Rain maxes out at 12. But now you're saying that it has to cost the same. No, I right? I agree. Like, I agree. It's going to it, it is a nerf. I'm not saying it's not a nerf. I'm simply saying Reign of Frogs was such a busted card to begin with at two at two mana and and by the way i wish i had gotten to play it at one yeah <laughs> i really wish i, so, I upgraded uh, qu- it to sorry. level five quick history lesson it used to cost three mana at, at one the, at the early levels and then two mana at the mid levels and then one mana at level five correct and that was uh ridiculous it was it was essentially unplayable at three mana because you were paying more mana getting fewer frogs and then you got it down to two mana, and you were like, okay, this is all right, but man, I'd really like to have this at one mana. <laughs> I leveled it up to five, I think, the month after it got nerfed to two mana. Uh, that's just my luck, right? What am I going to do? But I will say this. When it got nerfed to two mana, a lot of people were saying, oh, dear, it's double the cost. It's not playable anymore. And you know what? It's been really playable because it's super good. <laughs> So yeah. it's obviously still got amazing board presence. Mm-hmm. So I, I think this nerf is fair. I think a nerf of going to um, five toads would have probably also been fair. Um, I like this one more because of how many neutral cards there are that stupidly combo with this card uh, unfairly that none of the other factions it works with. Braga, like, big sisters. Uh, Azure are uh, agile and uh, yep. Kindred's Grace. So yeah, Ooh, I, yeah. I, I, wait, I'm wait, very... wait. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Kindred's Grace is a card in this game. I <laughs> thought just one C played, played it. <laughs> I've played some of his decks, and yeah, they are fun. <laughs> there, it is. As, as fun. there it is. <laughs> they are hilarious. <laughs> so Everyone should fun. play one C's decks. Absolutely. Now, the problem here is that by making Reign of Frogs cost three mana. I think you're really only hurting the aggressive Shadowfen decks. And, you know, the Bragda decks that are maybe like a lighter mid-range deck, they have to slow down a little bit more and build a little bit differently to make the game last a little longer. Maybe. I don't but even know. They're not... they, were play... they were floating a mana most of the time on five. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you can get away with this if you still have Bragda in the deck. Yeah. You're going to be, I think you're going to be okay. And maybe you slow the deck down and, I didn't have a ton of defense before. Now I have Trekking Alderman and Loris or whatever. And you can't make that up on on the aggressive side. There's nothing else you can pair with Butchers to make Butchers work better or or make the game last longer. Like Now you're just stuck paying 8 mana to have 0 board presence and a 12 strength runner. And then you look at Ironclad playing an aggressive deck that spends 8 mana to have a 9 strength structure. And 14 damage of runner. Like, that's a huge discrepancy there. It is. And I would say that it's still probably unstable build. Um, so, going back, like, to this car, card in its core, I the reason I love this change is because I think this is only now going to be played in decks that want to combo with this card. People playing those cards that we just mentioned um, are pretty much only going to see or play this card in those decks versus in the past if you're playing a shadow fen deck you should have just been jamming this in and that's what i didn't like it, a card that was such a powerful enabler and it's like who knows what the opponent is going to be doing next are they going to be going absolutely massive with bragda or are they going to be going just to your face with obsidian or are they just pl- plugging the board to just continue getting value through witches and toad and everything like that and i think now it's much more con- um, condensed to that 
particular um, avenue that they want to go See, so I that you can actually play I around disagree. it. I, I will be honest. I, you sh- If you're playing Bragda, you should be playing this card. If you're playing mm-hmm. Klaxi, you should be playing this card. Mm-hmm. Yep. But here's the thing. For three mana, you clog the board. You play phenomenal de- defense. And you also make it hard to remove your front. If you're playing Shadowfen, you should be playing this card. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's it's more expensive than it used to be. Yes. Does that make it a bad card? No. But let me ask you this. At three mana for this card, what would you rather have? Would you rather have Lost Psyches? Opening, yes. Late in the game? No. So, like, what you're dismissing are a lot of those really important turns where you used to be able to play something like Toad, he hops across the board, uh, or, sorry, on six mana, you play Toad, he hops across the board, and then you rain of frogs, and uh, then you've got just an entire filled up board, and you can no longer do stuff like that on six mana turn, which six mana turn is a pretty important turn, and the amount of Shadowfin cards there are at four mana, as well as your two mana cards. Well, that's, that was the point I was making originally. So at, at six mana, I want to have a strong turn. I've got Witch's Toad. I've got Dubious Hags, Gifted Recruits, Sparkly Kitties, Toxac. I have plenty of options to go a four and a two. For those of you who haven't tried it yet, Blood Ministers is actually really good. I'm playing Blood Ministers as just my main six drop right now instead of Cordia, which, by the way, is still super good. Uh, so, so you've got solid just six mana cards to play on six you've got really good four and two options already and hey if you happen to just have helio troopers in hand and you were like well i'm just gonna play helio troopers and a strong two may i suggest playing helio troopers and the rain in your deck in your hand like that's still good you were gonna do that anyway if you didn't have a strong four right yeah i it's anytime not, there is a, a mana not that bad Mana increases and mana discounts are insane. And and so I think this will definitely still see play. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think it is going to be substantially less played. And we've seen like there's been like the 50% win rate of Ironclad over the last year. Uh, first place Heroes League and the 50% uh, Shadowfen. And I do think that this drops the Shadowfen win by... Mm, probably about 10 to 15 percent over the course of next year see i agree with you that it's going to drop the play rate and i think it should drop the play rate no i mean all first I'm place win is, rate right yeah but all i'm saying is the play rate drop of this card and shadow fen in general is going to be more than it should be because a broken two drop now being still one of the most powerful three drops it's no longer broken it is still one of the most powerful three drops in the game, right? Yeah. You know, I, uh, I, I, I just, my point of view is just that it now it only goes in slower decks. It does not go. It in, goes in great with it faster. goes great with butchers, baby. It really does. <laughs> it well, goes. Great I, I, I just stop playing butchers at that point. Why? Right, like the combo is just too expensive. I'll, I'll run Tigor or. Even like salty outcasts. Now I'll I'll I'll, I'll play Claxi because I love Claxi. So because I'm playing that, I'm playing Rain, and it never hurts to have butchers to go sure, with Rain. But it, anyway. you're talking about with with Claxi in a slower deck at that point. I mean, it, it's a slower deck. I will concede that it is a slower deck. It is, however, not a controlling deck. It is still just a heavy mid range deck. I just prefer Claxi. To Bragda, I play Claxi in less than ten percent of my games. Most of the games, I will set up Claxi. My opponent can't clear my rain, and instead of playing Claxi on eight, you know what I do? I play Butchers and Saber Paws and just win the game. Yeah, I and you know what I'm going to do now? The same thing. I look at, I look at this the same way Thomas does. I think where they only have a limited number of levers that they can pull to change the mm-hmm. card right the only numbers that you have on the card are mana strength and movement and occasionally an ability and changing the strength not that impactful changing the movement pretty impactful we saw that with Murs, right yep. we saw that with siege breakers a long time ago yeah yeah um it, changing the mana it is typically the most impactful thing that they can do is it because because again yes. toxac went from one to two rain went from one to two and in both cases i don't feel like i see it less look at cordia 
when Cordy was seven mana, went down to six. Okay, fair enough. In that look at Cordia, like you said before, Cordia after the string change is still fine. Still fine. Yeah, I, I think that like if we're talking about these things, I think mana cost in general, this is obviously oversimplifying because we could get into probably a thousand corner cases because there's 200 some cards. <laughs> um, I, I think it's mana cost is the most impactful, movement is the second most, and then um, the strength is the final. I flip, I flip your first two. I think movement is... is the most powerful lever to to you you take away movement on any card uh and it's it's like how good is ubis right now ubis is fine add movement to it it's busted mm -hmm. it's just busted uh didn't ubis cost six mana for a while at some point sure or no? it's still really good at five no it, it did i don't know if it cost six mana but it, it it was activated by not only dragon but like dragon hero the hero portion of it reactivated it so you could be like next to a dragon and cordia and it would send two pings that's right that, that's equivalent to, just... to strength sure um yep. so that that's the weakest of the three i agree that strength yep. is the weakest of the three but i think movement more than anything uh you take away movement and it's just you you've really nerfed the card mana i i mean i'll be honest i didn't have cordia at five when it was uh, level five when it was a seven mana card my guess is it was more playable than people were giving it a shot. I am playing uh, Blood Ministers right now. And let me tell you how good of a card it is. It is backbreaking when you play it. Wait, and hang on a second. I, we've mm -hmm. the closest. I was just racking my brain. The closest card that we've got to being able to have this kind of um, competition would be uh, Big Thrust tiger Tigers. Used to be uh, three mana, seven strength with its uh, ability. And now it's two mana with five strength. Obviously, they the decrease on two strength is a huge deal. But if they would have decreased the mana cost by one... Uh, oh, wait, no. We're talking about strength again. Sorry, yeah, not yeah, movement. Yeah, no, no. Yep, sorry. Apples to oranges. Big, big Thrust still sees some play. Mm -hmm. uh, I, know, I still I like know. it. Yeah, yeah, it's still fine. I don't... It's a nerf. I'm not saying it's not a nerf. All I'm saying is I can tell you already, like the hairs on the back of my neck are pricking up. People are going to overreact. The play rate is going to swing way too far the other way. This is still one of the best three drops in the game. It yeah. was a broken two drop. And just because it was a broken two drop doesn't mean that it's not playable when it's one of the strongest three drops. That's my whole point. It's just don't 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 swing too far in the other direction. Mostly correct. So I am going to half agree with what Free Litter says because again, I think that this is going to be going into those dedicated decks. If you're just playing Shadowfen good stuff and your three drops aren't instead Helio Troop, like if you're just playing a just a value deck and if your choices aren't like Helio Troopers or Hunter's Vengeance and trekking aldermen and instead you're playing rain of frogs you're probably playing a value shadow fin deck incorrectly but if you're playing a dedicated shadow fin deck where you've got a purpose behind clogging up the board bragda uh claxi so on and so forth then yes rain of frogs is still a great choice and you should definitely be including in your deck even at three mana yeah i mean Honestly, even if you're playing Hunter's Vengeance, Reign of Frogs is such a good way to counter your own Hunter, Hunter's Vengeance so you're not giving up front. Like, if you're playing Toxac, Reign of Frogs is such a good card to play with Toxac. I don't know. I, I, it's It won't be busted anymore, I think. I think it'll now be still beyond fair. Uh, I, I think it's still one of the stronger three drops in the game. I agree, Trekking Alderman's probably busted. All right, it let's move on. Is. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, especially in Shadowfen where you can abuse it. Let's move on from there because this isn't the only balance change, it turns out. It's just going to be the most impactful of them. Let's move on to one that's maybe a little less impactful because I don't know that this is really going to move the needle on play rate. Uh, Thomas, I gave Sabaiku Reign of Frogs. I know you've been dying to play Boomstick Officers. What's going on with it? It is getting another buff for how many times in a row? <laughs> <laughs> this time they got it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. Its uh, ability now deals an extra point of damage uh, across the board, except for up at level 5, it'll do up to 10 damage to the unit uh, behind it. Will that make a difference? Probably not. Um, we've covered this uh, card a few times ago. Cards that do anything behind that card itself, just so impossible to play. Um, with any success it's just it's too difficult to do 
this card does have great value. Um, Fantastic but value. It, it's just it's not going to happen. Uh, maybe in draft. Happen. Maybe in draft is a good way to put it, right? Maybe in the rodent brawls, I'll try it out, but probably I not. Played, I played it. Wait, I played it in the rodent brawls, didn't I? Yeah. Did you? I don't know. Was it highly effective? I don't did it, remember. Did it win actually. you games? No, 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 no. Yeah. That was uh, boomers and uh, overchargers were what won me games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, this, a pupil. This is fine it's always been fine it's always gonna be fine they could make it a hundred damage instead of 10 damage and it'll be fine like you're okay gonna... i would do it at 100 damage <laughs> <laughs> but why why Wait, well so, how so, is 100 so... be- better than 10 like honestly because like, 10 does enough most of the time anyway single opponent that plays rhyme and it's just <laughs> giving me some smug emojis and i'm just like oh I got you. <laughs> you went with the YOLO rhyme on my baseline. Well, I got the answer. Yeah. And it's then, not confinement. That'd be too easy. Well, see, that, that same guy is going to play Erratic Neglects on the, the road behind it. And, and then, then I give would you the cry. Wiki, and then he's going to play it. And then you're going to be like, no! <laughs> There's no way I can remove five health. <laughs> yeah no it's just it's 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 a fine card it's a good idea it doesn't work because it's six mana like mm-hmm. that, yep. that's really all it comes down to it, it, absorbing varmint at four mana doesn't do anywhere near as much damage but at least like i tried it out and i played it and it was okay it wasn't good because it had a little more limitations on the ability like if you made boomstick four mana i'd play it absolutely mm-hmm. yep agreed I play it in Shadowfen, where my three mana Reign of Frogs is going to guarantee me frontline. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that. I oh. love the concept. I, I, I think I agree with what Sabaiku said. Really, really, at the end of the day, there are some turns that really need to have power. Uh, four mana in this game really needs to have power. Six mana is one of the others. And and boomsticks fine for like the value isn't terrible, but it's not one of the power sixes. No, because it doesn't significantly impact the board. It's right. at best it removes one unit and puts a pretty bo- solid body on the board. But because of the geographic constraints, right, the positional constraints, like oftentimes just, uh... you're just not able to actually use the ability. Mm-hmm. And when you are able to use ability, most of the time, it's not taking full advantage of the ability already. Like, I had trouble finding an 8-strength target for it, let alone a 10-strength target. Like, most of the time, you're removing a 5, 6 health unit. Yeah. I mean, I will say that it was nice that even before, it wasn't removing a target of that health kind of a thing. So, if like, if it was a bigger unit, you could deal 8 damage to it, right? Um so you were still reducing the damage you were taking to face by eight. Uh, but in general, I don't know, like the games that I play, I rarely see a healthy eight one unit like Siege Breakers gets played and it's trading into something and there's three health left over when it's done. Right. Like there's just not eight health on the board to remove in one unit. Most well, of the time. it's because you don't want that your front line to be that much um further ahead than where your opponent's front line is like if you can play this to destroy something behind that means your opponent has too much front and that's, that's i think true. the core issue this card yeah that's that's a really good point <laughs> yep yep yeah no i agree all right but still it is a buff it should improve the play rate i don't think boomstick officers is a bad card by any stretch of the imagination it's just there's there's better options at six, but this will do fine for you if you choose to play it. It was already going to do fine for you, but maybe this is the nudge you needed to give it a shot and try it out, and then you'll find out that yeah, it's fine. Uh, Subaiku, I've heard that Gold Grubbers is getting a buff. What's going on here? Yeah, Gold Grubbers is now going to replace two non-pirate cards in your hand at levels four and five instead of one. So if you have a high level gold grubbers, you can move through your deck maybe a little more quickly. Uh, some more pirate fun. I think that this is not at all an impactful change, but I do not play a lot of pirate themed decks. So I don't know, maybe there's a handful of players out there that are really going to appreciate this. 
I don't know that there was a clamor for it, and I frankly don't even know if this is a buff or a nerf. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, really top-notch analysis that our viewers and listeners have come to expect from the Brood Sages. We don't know, folks, whether this is actually a buff or a nerf. Um, we're going to go with the fact that you're not getting gold as a reward for this change to suggest that it's a nerf be- or a buff because that's all we had to go on. You move through your deck faster, but also you get rid of stuff that you were trying to hold in your hand. I know a lot of times when I play gold grubbers, I'm looking at it thinking, just please discard the one on the right and not the one on the left. I'm like trying to win that 50-50. Now I can't win that 50-50. 50-50. So. It's a thirty-three sixty-six. It's like... I've got one runner, but I can't use it until I use gold grubbers to remove this one unit on their penultimate row so that I can send the runner in for for lethal. Two other cards in my hand. Cycle one of those. Guaranteed 100% of the time, it's the runner that gets cycled. Guaranteed. Just flat out right now. I don't even have to play gold grubbers to find out. This should never happen to you because your only runners in the deck should be first mutineers and blue sail. (laughs) Not blue sail. Just Wait, what's, please what's, don't play that. Please. What, what is? I'm sorry. What blue? What? <laughs> Come on, it, pirate runners. Never discard them. That's the synergy we're trying to go with here. <laughs> so I got to tell you, I've played gold grubbers in uh, uh, Shadowfen decks a couple of times, trying to like back when Mers had movement, and I'm like, oh, I want to cycle to Mers. This is gonna be great. So I'm gonna play gold grubber. It's always Lime Limbs. Lime Limbs is the card that just like, hey, I've got lethal. They're at four. Let's just play Gold Grubbers. And yep, yep, I've lost. <laughs> when I'm when I'm having that conversation of I just need to play Gold Grubbers and not discard Lime Limbs. Yeah, nope, the game's over. Well, I'm excited for this change because I shouldn't give the uh, general public this information, but I but do generally to. play. If if I'm gonna play Rogue Sheep. I'm playing Gold Grubbers in my deck because Ooh. of all of the uh, pirates, Gold Grubbers has one of the highest uh, values to mana cost. So why would I not play one of the highest value to mana cost cards in my Rogue Sheep deck? Sure, yeah, the reason it why shouldn't be playing it's a, just a four ma- It's a four mana, eight strength. Like There's, yeah, there's a fine. bunch of them out there, yeah. but it, it's fine. It, it gets the mm-hmm. job movement. Done. Yep, exactly. And so, yeah, like I, I've been playing it in every single one of those decks, and I did actually generally like the ability. Um, it was doing what I wanted it to. I wish it would have done this at level the one through three, so I could um, bring it up a couple notches over in the uh, the draft bound world. But um, unfortunately, with a level four and five, it's still going to stay at the same tier there. But but it's yeah, an no. Epic, right? Or am I mm-hmm. misremembering? Yeah, it's, it's an epic, a, it's an epic so it's and that's really the reason why I don't think yeah. we'll actually get it to level four um, regularly in draft. Yeah, but yeah. I I like the uh, two cards in in this. It's going to be a lot of fun with Murs and Harvester type decks with Rogue Sheep being able to either get back to your token faster or just get back over to your Rogue Sheep faster. It's going to be awesome when you're playing it on eight mana and. You're like, all right, I'm going to play a couple cards, play Gold Grubbers to make this clear and set up for my Gift of the Wise. Ah, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's really going to be fun? Your opponent opens with Murs, then the next turn they play this and then play the token. Absolutely. For, I cannot for, wait to do this. For, for all the times that I've seen my opponent play Murs and then the next turn token, which is more than a handful, it's rare, but it happens. This is going to exacerbate that, right? This gives what is that a eighteen percent higher chance? Yeah, it's 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 that's, going that's to actually pretty significant. It it's is a, huge. Yeah, it is a huge change. You are going to see a Mers opener into Gold Grubber's token turn two, like almost thirty three percent more often than you saw Mers into a token. I'm Am so I excited. wrong. No, you're you're 100 right. That's the reason I'm excited for this. I That's think like this a, is going to be a lot of fun. That is a kick in the nuts right there. <laughs> well, then you better play it so it doesn't happen. Yeah, to I'm going to I'm gonna have to just play Mers Gold Grubbers decks all all well with three mana Reign of Frogs to prove a point. <laughs> all right, actually, let's let's get on to my favorite buff of this month. Uh, I'll give. This then one. why don't you take this one? No, 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 no. I'm I'm just the uh, the coordinator here. You guys talk it through. Uh, this one's to you, Thomas. Uh, North Sea Dog. All right. 
the ability is uh, being amped uh, across the board by one, except for at level five, it's getting an extra two. So the new ability is going to be grant six, seven, eight, ten, twelve strength. Oh, sorry. It's a two mana 12 13. unit. Oh, 13. Right, because the ability gets 12 yeah, yeah, on yeah. top of the base strength. It's a two mana 13 at level five. That's two reasonable. Mana. Yeah. That's a lot, but it's really, really hard to pull off. Um, Is it? it? It's really hard to pull off. It's a little, it, it's very much dependent on your deck. You do absolutely have to build your deck around pulling it off. And so you're saying I, I should. Put 100% have the deck for it. I'm ready. Yeah, exactly. It should be like Icicle, Shivana, Erratic, Summon Militia, this. We've tried this kind of thing before, and we've quickly found that the Hearth was just more consistent. The Hearth is more consistent, but not as much fun. <laughs> also, it takes a long time for the Hearth to give 13 strength. Yeah, that's also you, true. <laughs> you can do it in just one well, turn. That's one much turn. easier. <laughs> This is technically three turns, because tw- again, it's gained twelve strength, so that's three turns worth of hearth buffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can do it on five, a mana five, which would be, you know, if you played hearth on one, you wouldn't get anything on two because you haven't played a card to get buffed. Whereas this, you could play something else on mana three, mana four, do whatever, and then on mana five, play this, and crazily, the other three cards in your hand could have been one drops. Mm. prototypes erratic neglects and summon militia into this is a mana five turn that's just <laughs> not a single one of those has solid movement to reset your opponent's front that's the reason why it's not consistent and not okay how about it. this then icicle <laughs> jev <laughs> sparkly gifted gifted recruits sparkly yeah sparkly pick a two drop sparkly kitties gifted recruits rhymelings into this yep into yeah rhymelings into this <gasps> Look at that. What a turn five. The mana turn fives in Icicle Jev decks is going to be naughty. Yeah, this is this is definitely not highly played in even in a Javana Winter Rush deck. Like it's still very difficult to make happen even at that point. Um, yeah, but it's, but it's doing. It, when it does happen, it will probably just lock the game down for you. It does not move to Thomas's point, right? You cannot move with it. You cannot play defense with it. It's just a solid chunk of strength on the board. And then you have to kind of work your way down the board afterward. No, 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 I no, think no, no. that trade-off is worth it. It is 100% worth it, but you're forgetting one thing. Random Frogs is getting nerfed. Thomas is already showing us the, the, the meta's knee-jerk reaction. Ooh, play Swarm. Uh, 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 uh. Gold Garbus is getting buffed. We play sheep in our winter deck. We get ourselves some forgotten souls. So that way we can push our North Sea Dog <laughs> forward. There we go. Playing, playing chess playing. over here. That's it. 3D <laughs> chess, baby. Still, I'm two still the ahead. next turn. And, you know, North Sea Dog still has to come down as the last card in your hand. So you can't exactly hold on to your forgotten souls for it. You but, just have to be the killjoy, don't you? You know, it's it, that's why it's fun. It's a hard card to actually use, but the reward is so worth it. You do really have to build the deck around it. I can't imagine anything other than like the super lowest curve uh, swarm deck or winter deck playing it. I think. To to be clear, if you're building that deck, you want all the one drops you can have. You want Jev, and you also want Ubis, because it turns out that to make the lowest curve deck you can, you're going to play a lot of different unit types, and Ubis is so good in that deck. Do it. You know you want to do it. Just give in and do it. All right, moving forward from there, Sabaiku, we have Call for Aid, which is getting buff to maybe work with Rain? Call for Aid will now spawn unit with an extra one strength instead of three to seven. Now it will be four to eight strength. Still keeps the ability the same. The number of spawns the same. Um, and unfortunately, the mana cost is the same. And that's why Call for Aid is kind of, you know, in, in the uh, boomstick officer zone. It's fine. It works. It's great in, in uh, 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 Aaron decks. You can definitely do an Aaron call for aid. I I had a swarm deck that was difficult to play, but uh, was fun when I got it to work with Aaron call for aid and Dark Harvest. 
See, that's better than, than my Aaron call for aid talk sack. It turns out that if Aaron talk sacks herself first, there's nothing on the board to call for aid. <laughs> but now Just Aaron can pull that, that rain of frogs and save you three mana instead of two. So that's pretty Eat. amazing. Look. It's getting better every yeah, day. So call for eight is just fine. It's it's a big chunk of strength on the board, dispersed amongst a handful of units, but it doesn't reset your opponent's front. It doesn't really change the board state in any way. And it at seven mana, board. it needs to do that. I Wait, don't no, remember it... what uh, tier we have at it in draft, but I think this single-handedly uh, needs to make it be moved up a notch. In Agreed. draft, I agree, right? Look, in, a, in draft, you always want one just chunker of a card. That's the, at least the way that I play it. I'm, I'm looking for one solid, you know, five, six, seven mana thing that I can play that's just going to be big and occupy the board so I can uh, uh, remove something large the, my opponent has played or just put something big that's difficult for them to clear on their baseline. Now, call for aid has been that card for me in the past right it's just it's just putting a lot of strength on the board and that's fine and now it will put even more strength on the board and it's easy to upgrade as a rare in draft so look yeah. in general the reason why cordia was really good the reason why rain is broken is because we don't just play this game with the cards in our hand we play it on a board and occupying cells in that board is a big deal. Cordia is super powerful even after the nerf because one card occupies four cells. Rain occupies six for three mana. That's really good. Call for Aid occupies a lot of cards. Uh, boards. Pardon me. Call for Aid occupies a lot of board cells. Yes, but not as consistently as all of those other cards that you just mentioned. It's true. Like, it's true. And for That's more mana, right? Like, look, like we talked about earlier, nobody plays Cordia at seven mana. You play Cordia at six mana because it's busted. Cordia it also doesn't need another unit already on the board to work. Like, that's the biggest problem with Call for Aid is that you need to have something on the board and it needs to have space around it. So if you're playing something on the edge of the board, automatically you're just getting less value out of this card. If your opponent has units on the board that block off some of that, uh, uh, block off some of those tiles for you. Well, now you're getting less just because the board is so crowded. Like call for aid in a, in a meta where there's rain of frogs is terrible. That's the problem with this car, this card in general, right? Is like it's a wonderful value card. But it's a win more card. The optimal time to play it is when you have front and your opponent has no units on the board. Good news, you've won that game. Yeah, you could play anything there and occupy yeah, some cells you and you'd be fine. Stick and win that game. <laughs> and that's that's where I am on, on Call for Aid. It's, it's perfectly fine. You could fit it in any deck and have some success with it just because sometimes the game goes late and you have a unit on the board, and the situation is right. I'm like that's you could play it. In you could play vet, Toxac. You could play Veterans of War in that deck and have the same amount of success. Yes, but Aaron Toxac Call for Aid is more fun than than just a big old unit, right? You never know what's going to happen, and that's the fun of it. Let's move on because we actually have four new cards being uh, uh, delivered to us uh, on June twelfth. We are actually getting a new card final sacrifice because the first sacrifice wasn't enough it turns out like you made that sacrifice thomas and now everyone's coming back to you and saying hey you got any more what's going on here all right so four mana a spell um it's gonna be a rare thank god <laughs> trigger the ability of a friendly non-legendary unit with up to three four five six seven strength then destroy that unit all right, so the one that I have seen mentioned, which I find most engaging, Sabaiku, is getting crazy bombers onto your opponent's baseline and then playing Final Sacrifice. Sure, and then you'll, you'll get that crazy bombers damage spread out and actually hitting the base, which you can't do when you play it normally. But your crazy bombers has to survive a trade that to work because of the strength limitation here and crazy bombers never survives a trade with seven or under strength because crazy bombers does so much damage it clears whatever was in front of it there is no trade it's uh, full health so you, you know sacrifice a full health crazy bombers the when clarifying this on 
on Discord, Pajosha said that the way he thought about it was if you see the card text that says on play do X or after death do Y, just kind of take out the on play or the after death and that's what it'll make final sacrifice do. Uh, there's not like a ton of really great on play or on death effects that I can think of that I'd want to pay four mana to activate again. Azure Hatcher. If your Azure Hatcher survives, you could pop it. But for an the extra board's already mana. <laughs> board's already filled up, so you're not going to no, get. No, no, the Azure Hatcher hasn't popped yet. If the Azure Hatcher popped, then the Azure Hatcher isn't there to target with this. Right. So your opponent didn't trade into it. You don't have a whole bunch of one drops. And you're like, man, I would just have lethal right now with my butchers if only my opponent had popped my Azure. Oh, wait. But you can, just, you can just sacrifice your Azure because you play Shadowfin. Yeah, Toxic is cheaper is the by best. 50%. So, yeah, that's better. You could play this with Queen. And since the Doppel box has already clogged that entire row along with the uh, Dread Fawns, you would get like two units out of it. You can't play this with Queen because it's non legendary. Oh, wait. Because if you targeted, for example, Claxi. With this, Claxi would convert all the weakest units on the board, and then you play this on her, and she does all the next weakest units on the board. But, but wait, wait, be... wait, I want to do that. Well, yeah, I really start a petition. It. Start a petition to be able to target <laughs> legendary units. I'm going to start a petition to make Claxi an epic. Right? Like, <laughs> some on death effects, uh, like Snow Masons, if you want to play this with Snow Mason to get a ton of a buffing. Spare. Spare Dragonling is cheap at two mana so you could kind of like work with this bed broken earth drinks would be a disgusting board clear yeah but the bed doesn't die because it doesn't deal damage to dragons so the bed is still alive no, and then final sacrifice destroys it oh so my you, gosh, you trigger its funny. ability and then final sacrifice destroys it and you get the ability a second time thomas there you go you were worried about that one guy playing lady rhyme on ladder right You've just found the counter. <laughs> Easy two card combo. Easy two card combo. Man. Um, what else, Thomas? What do you got that that you can think of that oh, this would worth? After that really legendary well thing, that kind of screwed it up for me because I was going to say Broodmother was going to be amazing. Yep, Cordy would be amazing. Mers would have been nuts. I, I'm starting to realize why non legendary is on this card. <laughs> wait, 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 but, but wait, wait, wait. How good is witches with this? So you you play witches, you drain strength and move up, and then you play this again. So you're you're working with a new set of of right? ordering opponents. You you basically so your opponents got like a, a front of like three units or whatever. And they had play just witch- played uh, their call for aid minus that front unit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And, and so you play witches into the middle unit. And the witches moves forward, and then you play this, so your witches get giant, like 30, 30 health big, and then die. How about flesh menders? That's a big buff. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that. It often will end up bordering something else. Is is it worth doing? Like that's a lot of mana to put into just buffs. Yeah, I remember the favorite card that I had for this one. I knew there was something when I first saw this. Uh, Visions of the Grove would be pretty cool. Yes, because every time I've played Visions of the Grove, I've wished to myself, if only this died now. It, that, that would make my, my ritualistic seppuku all, all the better. Well, I'll, that's a card that could actually make you win, kind of like the same as Crazy Bombers, because you're going to get an extra two points of uh, damage off the uh, Visions trigger. Right. Well, wait, wait. Can I play this with, with like, chestnuts? Yeah, um, Elders, I don't think trigger. Uh, so Brashoja was trying to clarify that there are some some elders that will trigger and some will not. Okay. Something something like uh something that has to receive a set amount of damage for it to trigger. So for example, um chestnuts will probably not work because it when it receives damage if it's 3 it will do a three. Uh, sorry, if it's two, it will do a two damage ping. If it's one, it will do a one damage ping. So it needs to. It needs an incoming quantity of damage to work. In the same way, Bucks needs an incoming quantity of damage to know how much to buff the other units. Right. So He's, doing this on Bucks won't do anything. It that that really is what he damage. indicated on Discord. Um, okay. You know, okay. there's there's okay. still working out. Uh, 
they, he said that they were still actually testing a lot of before attacking uh, to see how that would go to. Um, so it might be a little inconsistent and we might have to kind of do a lot of testing with it to figure out what works and what doesn't. So you're saying I should play this with trekking. You should play this with armed schemers is what you should play it with. Now, That'd be good. Armed schemers is too much health to just throw away. This will kill whatever I play it on. So, like, if I play how trekking... About, and how about I Void play... Chargers, then? Okay. You do you do a bunch of damage. Why wouldn't I just Toxac the Void Chargers, then? And then you do a bunch more damage. But because this costs more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sold. All right, moving on. Uh, on June 19th, Sabaku, we have Quake Fall of the Skies. Uh, so, a two-mana spell now. Quake Fall deals one, two, three, four, five damage to non-temple structures. And then spreads the amount of damage received amongst surrounding enemy units and structures. All right. So my opponent plays unstable build as the only structure. If that's so the only, this only structure on the board, you're going to deal five damage at level five to their unstable build. And then that will do five damage to the enemy units around it or enemy structures around it. Wait, five total. Five total. total. Five each. Think of it like like okay. a mini crazy bombers. So my opponent played that unstable to go with Fort Tonic. Okay. And so he buffed all the units around that unstable mm -hmm. by six. And you're telling me that I'm now going to deal a total of five damage to all those units. That is correct. Yes, that's okay. my understanding of the card text here. Sweet. There, that's, it's that's it's really it's like he word. it's like your opponent buffed one fewer unit and also you hurt the unstable build a little bit yeah now i want to point out that this says it does damage to all non-temple structures so that includes friendlies oh dear so if you're running this card and you want to play structures make sure all your structures are temples which temples would you recommend Oh, any Little of them, guy. really. They're, they're, all, they're, all, they're all pretty equivalent. Uh, I think you can okay. find one to slot into your deck, depending on which faction you feel like playing. I feel like playing Temple of the Heart, because i got to tell you, every time anyone plays Temple of the Heart against me, I'm immediately confused and not sure what I want to do. Wait, should I, should, should I still go face? Do I, do I remove the... What, what do I do? Well, like, if you are playing this card, you're going to want Temple of the Heart because you're going to have to heal back up from all the damage <laughs> you take from playing Quake Fall. <laughs> uh, yeah. non-structure opponents. So, look, it does... You mean your opponents? It's two, it's two mana at level five. Two mana, ten damage at a minimum if your opponent plays one structure. Think of it that way. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking yep. about it. If, oh, your, if your opponent plays multiple structures, that damage scales really quickly. Because yeah, that is now, true. look, if they play, a, I don't know, a true shot and a siege assembly right next to each other, you deal five to each of those, and then they ping each other as a surrounding enemy unit or structure. That works out pretty well. So what you're really telling me is this, is, this, is, this card is actually a nerf to low-level Mia. Where you I have to play, me, yeah. Where you, yeah, you have to look, play it actually bordering or surrounding. I will tell you, I'm going to play this in the aftershock brawl. One hundred percent, all the way. Okay, that's funny because it's funny. It's funny, but my my aftershock strategy is one hundred percent ruined now. Though my my toad spam is not going to survive any of this. Thomas, on the twenty sixth, we get stream of consciousness, which is essentially, I believe. The card named after the Brood Sages podcast. Hey, oh. <laughs> All right. So we've got Stream of Consciousness, a three mana spell. Uh, destroy a target friendly ancient unit and play a random level one, two, three, four, five non ancient use it unit on the same tile. And boy, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so I play Erratic Neglects and then I play Stream of Consciousness and I get. Frost Hexers. No, I get Ice Flakes. Yeah, see, you've upgraded your unit already. Have I? Now, what if you get Claxi? Okay. What if you get Murs? <laughs> okay. But see, now look, it doesn't say you get the unit on the board. It says play the unit, which means you get its on-play ability. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if you'll get movement with this card or with whatever gets played. I guess I would I believe guess no. I believe you will. Oh my goodness. So wait, I play Stream of Consciousness mm -hmm. on a unit that's already on the board. Mm -hmm. Not only does it go away. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, Boomstick Officer shows up, moves forward, and throws 12 damage to... I think we settled on 100. 100 damage <laughs> to nothing <laughs> on the board behind it. So is there like this sort of like... The, the one use case I could see for this card is a, I'm dead. My opponent has me base locked. I got nothing to do. I'm just going to play this summon militia that i have play stream of consciousness on it and just hope that whatever comes out of it what well, has to be on an agent so you do have to play it with oh, erratic, erratic neglect. Neglect. there you go we're gonna play erratic neglects on our second row stream of consciousness it and just hope it's crazy bombers um i mean you have like a 0.5 percent chance of that happening so good luck it's totally worth doing then right because i'm dead otherwise if it's sure. not crazy bombers and or boonstick i'm dead any out is an out sure any out's an out but i think you're looking at this the wrong way this card is just super fun there's a lot Absolutely. of there's a lot of really high impact cards in the game and there are a lot of cards that you don't play just because they're a pile of stats and don't have a lot of impact like if you just get a card that's a pile of stats that's fine you just turned your i don't know you turned your erratic neglects into a flameless lizard and you got a one mana discount from it or a mindless horde and then you paid four mana for a mindless horde instead of three like it happens man no. so are you gonna start getting excited about getting uh heroic soldiers <laughs> <laughs> I'm already excited about heroic soldiers. I'll be honest. Now, um, Thomas did crunch the numbers on this one. Okay, mm -hmm. what'd you find, Thomas? So the average mana cost of uh, non-agent cards in the game is four point five six mana. So okay. when you're playing your erratic neglects and your three mana uh, stream of consciousness, you're, it's four mana, and you're getting a four point five six mana value of a card on average out on the board. The thing is, is that, yes, you're getting like a cheat on mana, uh, getting more mana value out of it. Because it's random, you're not actually going to get 4.56 mana value out of that card that um, teleports in. Or actually, I'm going to be curious about the animation on this. Uh, 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 I really want to see the animation. I bet it's going to look great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, sorry. Our, uh, our <laughs> podcast logo. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be sweet. <laughs> sorry, off topic. Um because you don't know what the ability is going to be, that doesn't mean you actually get that 4.5 uh, mana value because it could be something like Boomstick that's trying to shoot to the back. It could be something like Overchargers trying to shoot to the front. It could be something that like Sparkly Kitty is trying to run off to the left or right. So, or even Void Surgers, but because you were trying to get a um, Salty Outcast to run into the opponent's base and said you got the, the Void Surgers over in the corner and you don't get the ability... Um, you're not going to actually get a whole lot of value actually out of this card. So I'm going to have to re-crunch the numbers, probably discounting um, abilities, because most of the time I would be willing to bet that we're not going to get anywhere near the ability that we're hoping for. Sure. And we're going to have to mostly just rely on the vanilla stats. That is the, the movement yes. and the... Uh, it, it's all about strength. movement and strength. I agree with you. You can't rely on an ability because if you're trying to pick out a specific ability, the the chances of that happening are just so low, it's not even worth it. But just in I'm terms putting, of I'm, raw I'm strength, this right? Clown, this is going into my Clown Fiesta Absolutely. deck. Absolutely. And it's going in my Clown Fiesta deck specifically to try to guess and receive the benefits of on-play effects. So... Because that's you, fun, I agree. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. and that's what this card is. It's it's fun. Yeah. But just looking sure. at looking at the distribution of mana cost, there's about a one in three chance that you get a one, two, or three mana card out of this. So it's not great. But that well, means that two two thirds of the time you got four or more. At at four mana, that's twenty percent of the time you're getting your money back there. Essentially, right? You're turning erratic plus a spell into something that's you know probably eight to ten strength yay half the time you're getting something that costs five or more see that is awesome and that's, that's a, what it's worth. like half the time you're getting five or more mana worth of stats on the board like that's probably pretty good 
it's going to be the least reliable card in the game. Like we talked about how unreliable it was to get some significant use out of Boomstick. This is going to be even less reliable than that, but it's going to be a lot of fun to just put in your deck and play with. See, the thing that I really like about this deck, though, is like, or this card, is uh, I'm reminded of Brian Kibler. I'm, I will admit again to being an unabashed Kibler fanboy. But one of the things that always blew my mind about Kibler is when he was playing a deck, um, oh gosh, uh, the Grand Tournament. I can't remember the name of the legendary, but there's a legendary that uh, every time you used your hero power would create a uh, spell for you. And when I was watching him play that deck, there would be times where he was like, we're dead unless we get exactly one of these three spells. I don't know. Maybe we have a chance at it. Three spells for an out, and we can we can continue. Let's go. And having that knowledge of the game and that understanding of all the cards in the Perpetual Library is an advantage. Like, you will be rewarded for playing this card if you know the game. If you can understand the situations in which, you know what? Playing Stream of Consciousness on this card right now gives me a X chance of removing my opponent's units or hitting a runner that wins the game. Like this is my best chance and I can be rewarded for taking the best line. That's what I love about the card is that it will reward people who understand and have not memorized, but at least a strong familiarity with the cards in the game. We're going to have to crunch the numbers, Thomas, to see how many cards have two or three movement. So you can start thinking about what what are your chances of getting that surprise lethal. Agents in charge, baby. I'll be doing that tomorrow. Or salty off gas. Or Only move siren. Out. Siren. <gasps> All right. Or well, you get first mutineers, and then it discards the other runner you were hanging on to. No! <laughs> well, if any of you want to try out these cards, just remember that they're going to be available in the brawls June 16th for Final Sacrifice, June 23rd for Quake Fall of the Skies, and the 30th will be the Brawl with Stream of Consciousness. So give them a shot, see what you think. Um, some of these cards, I think, are going to require at least a couple of weeks of, of testing to, to really figure out. So I don't know that we'll know after the Brawl whether or not they're killer. Uh, there's also going to be a new login system. Sabaiku, so, any news? Yeah, they've been working on this one for a while. Now in the patch notes, it says it's not exactly ready, but it's almost there. Uh, This will let you migrate your current account from Congregate to either Google Play or Apple Game Center and uh, hopefully do it without losing your progress is their goal. Uh, So there's going to be detailed steps in the game to show you how to move that. The most important thing, when you're moving your account, you can change your username as long as it is an unclaimed username. And if you have an existing username and you're not player XYZ, then it will preemptively reserve your current username for you so you can transfer without having to switch your name, which is fantastic. I, th- I think that's a great way to do it. It is. Uh, I'm just going to put this out now. Everyone who's out there, please do not reserve. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, That's going to be my new name. (laughs) That's going to end the main portion of this episode, which means it's time for me to remind you to please contact us, preferably in our channel on the Stormbound Discord server, on Twitter at BroodSages, and always at uh, thebroodsages at gmail.com if you wish to email us. This week, we heard from Dragonstar5674, who said, love the extra comment. Awesome commentary on the current meta. This is uh, in regards to some of the conversations that have happened from other pieces of feedback we've received. So please continue to give it to us. Dragonstar, thank you so much for that uh, bit. Um, I feel like we've kind of run a little too long on this episode, so we're not going to dive into any additional commentary at this point. Uh, So instead, that's going to do it for this episode. For Sabaiku and Thomas, I am Freeloader. We are the Brood Sages reminding you to stay hydrated.